Yo, what is up, my homies, my friends, my favorite people in the whole wide world, what is happening? Well, it's episode 26 of Zach Miller Live, and while the big news that I predicted last week did not happen, I kind of am right because I did say that a number one would be to a number sixteen would be to one. I just picked the wrong one. Look, I'm 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 trying I'm trying to get this one. I did say that Kansas was going to lose to Penn. That did not happen. But late Friday night, Virginia became the first ever si- uh, one seed to lose to a sixteen seed. That was exciting. West Virginia still in it. But that's not why we're here today. Eric, John, Woody, great to chat with you for a while this morning. Zach with the beard, Stanley. Yeah, for those of you listening, I do have a beard. Stay tuned, though. Tomorrow, it's going to look a little different. I got something to spice things up. Look at this hair today. Like, it's ridiculous. Maybe I need a haircut. Yeah, that's what it is. Maybe I'm just going to keep growing it out. I mean, look. Look at this thing. It is... It's ridiculous. I love it. Appreciate you all being here today. Zach Miller Live, episode 26. It's hard to believe that this little thing is already in its sixth week. Because it really was just, uh, oh, we should probably start doing this thing. Started doing it. Look, six weeks later, here we are. I want to talk about a topic, though, that... It's, I guess, near and dear to my heart, but it's also something that I think too many people overthink. I was doing a talk last Wednesday, I believe, in Franklin, about an hour from my house, and a lot of the topics that I was talking about kept going to the same ending. You're overthinking everything. Most people, I believe, are overthinking Probably the majority of what they're doing to the point where, oh, when am I ever going to get this result? Oh, I can't ever start this thing until I start this thing. Like all these challenges. And I think what's interesting is and we started to see it last week. You know, I've been saying, hey, guys and girls, do not just just start doing stuff. Right. Stanley, for example, was looking for different ways to be seen, but wasn't really, was overthinking stuff, right? And I said, hey, this is how easy it is to make a podcast. He's already done one episode. I don't know if he's done a second one yet, but it was an introduction thing. And the hardest part is getting started. And that's why I think we should all just, at the bare minimum, Get started with stuff. So we, I guess as a society, want things to be perfect. Yet things are never really perfect, right? I'm using a tool right now, Facebook, that is, gosh, 14 or 15 years old now. Live video, I don't even think was a thing 14 or 15 years ago. Maybe, maybe if you were like super wealthy and enterprise, you could do it. And so we often as society look at these polished things that have decades of experience and billions of dollars backing them. And we say, oh, I can do that. And while you may very well be able to do that, you probably don't have the resources available that that company does. And what's challenging is that you have to just get started. Lorenzo, Jess, hello. What I mean by just getting started is I look at some of my career and I look back and I say, man, that is really terrible looking. I love watching some of my older videos. 
I love actually watching the video of me reviewing a, uh, a talk that I had with Jess Horton. And this talk, I met her at, I think it was in 2013 at an HR AMA meeting, which I don't even know what that stands for, but it was talking about marketing and I was talking about like cheap, easy ways. Imagine this cheap, easy ways to like be seen. And here I am, uh, five years later, writing a book on that. Basically <laughs> that's funny. I just made that comparison. I didn't think about that before, but so I met Jess at this event and I guess she'd been at a couple events before, but I never said anything. And just if you're listening, uh, fill me in on the story. But so she reaches, she she comes up to me afterwards and is like, hi, um, I have this blog and I want it to grow and I need your help. And so we got together for coffee. She was late, so I had to buy my own. I remember that. I'm just kidding. No, I'm not kidding, but it wasn't that big of a deal. And so... We, we meet and we talk about ways for her to increase her blog. And it's called the fitpetite.com. I don't think it was the fitpetite.com at that point. I think it was something else. But today it's this, uh, the fitpetite.com. Just, you can link it in the um, comment. Just comment that. And she wanted to talk about like fitness and wanted to have a calendar and wanted to review different kind of gyms and clothes and tools and techniques. And, and so she was willing to do all this stuff. And I was like, just start doing it. And what's crazy is I look back at this. I, so one of my favorite features with Facebook is this thing called um, on this day. And on this day goes back and shows you things that you did on that day years ago, years in the past. And so hers recently came up maybe, I don't know. It came up within the last few months and I documented on YouTube, a video of me going over her questions. And I probably have similar hair then. I should find this video. But the problem that most of us have is that we have these one-on-one -on -one conversations with people. So Stanley or Jess or Lavinia or Eric or Lorenzo, 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 I don't know why I said Lorenzo or Woody. We're having these conversations with these people and it's one-on-one. -on -one. And there's really nothing proprietary about these conversations yet we hide them. And what I mean by we hide them is we only have these conversations one-on-one -on -one and we don't use it as a way to get in front of more people. So think about the top five questions that you get asked over and over and over and over again. You literally probably answer the same questions at every meeting that you have with someone. It doesn't matter if you own a business, if you are getting out of school, looking for a job, if you're in a job looking for a better job and you're a specialist, like what are people asking you over and over again? Maybe you are, have technical skills and people are asking you how to get through a very technical thing. Why don't you document? So, so understand what those questions are. Why don't you document? And what I mean by document is create content that will help you in the long run be seen over and over and over again. And what I mean by this is so that conversation I have with Jess, I shot a video about it. So that means that content, I don't know how many views it has at this point, that, that conversation that I had, I then took it from one to one and made it so that I could, it could be seen by a lot of people or everyone or the internet. Boom, boom, boom. So we overcomplicate stuff, right? Like you're looking for a piece of content to create. What's the question that you keep getting? What are the questions that people ask you every day? I and mean, that's, that's kind of how I 
decided to write Anomaly was it's the number one question I get asked. So why not document that whole process and, and instead of having all these answers scattered everywhere, put them in one place. By the way, if you're looking to get an early access to Anomaly, I forgot the title of my book right there. There's a few days left in the Kickstarter and uh, would love your support. You can get a book for as cheap as 17 bucks. You can buy a couple of them for more than 17 bucks. Get an autographed version for, I don't know, 53 bucks or something like that. Would love your support. And so, yes, this evergreen content, which is basically information that stays relevant forever. What you do is you basically like a rotisserie chicken, you set it and forget it. And also kind of like your compound interest that we learned about in school. It's kind of like that too. So when you're searching for something, I don't know, give me something to search. Um, ask me a subject to look at. Let's do this. Like I'm going to search. Let's see. I am going to search. I'm going to show you guys it so you guys can see. If you're watching, I'll just walk you through. Okay, so here's my screen. I don't know. Best roller coasters in the world. I, my guess is Cedar Point is going to pop up on this. But it might be some sort of... Okay, this is, this is actually even better. Okay. So, best roller coasters in the world. Business Insider 2016. Article is two years old. Okay, this one, 10 tallest roller coasters, one year old. And some of these other things are probably actually really old too. Look at this, 2015. Why? Because it's content that basically is going to stay relevant forever, right? Let's see what this is. Let's see what the best roller coasters are. I've not been on that. Whoa, look at that thing. That thing looks ridiculous. Oh, looks like you're using an ad blocker. Don't tell anyone. But my point is that as soon as you start creating content, that will start ranking in the indexes. This one's from 2014, as you can see right there. And it probably has a series of different roller coasters. Okay. That one, that one, haven't been on that. Man, I'm losing big time. I haven't been on any of these roller coasters. Let's go to the top page. My point is, and with all of this, is that as soon as you start creating content, right? Like, how do you tie a pocket square? How do you run a half marathon? I haven't been on any of these rides. This site sucks. I don't like that list, but my point is, is that that content is basically going to stay relevant forever. And what's crazy is this site doesn't even have to be necessarily updated and amazing. It's just they won on those select keywords. And what I mean by keywords is like a series of words that you want when people are searching for you to you rank for. So like they probably are trying to rank best, whatever I Googled, best roller coasters, top roller coasters in the world. What did I Google search? Best roller coasters in the world. So these, I guarantee that those selections, of, I guarantee that these selections of words are what this website right here is basically trying to win. And we go over all of this in Anomaly, so don't worry. All you have to do is grab your copy. But we're overthinking too much. And instead of just documenting what our customers are already asking us or the conversations with our prospects and friends are already having, what are we doing to get that conversation in front of people over and over again, right? And so as Stanley asked me, what are some more ways to get in front of your customers? I could do a blog post on, you know, the top 10 ways to get in front of customers, right? And then every time someone asked me that question, I could just send them that link. And then hopefully it helps people. They share it. It ranks higher on that Google engine or Bing or whatever those other search engines are. Yes, evergreen is important, but it should be updated appropriately. Yeah, so if, if you're talking about 
something from five years ago and it's been updated, you absolutely need to, to change that. What are some more ways to get in front of your customer, Stanley? Let's think. So today I went through a list of people that I wanted to get in contact with. So I already had their contact information. And last week I messaged them saying, hey, can we chat today? Many of them did. Um, something I like to call the 5010 challenge, which is a series of really quick talks with people individually. So it's 50 10 minute talks, hopefully within three days or less, where you're basically trying to help people provide value, figure out their pain points, what's keeping them up at night. So maybe you could find people that, so you could go to stores like Men's Warehouse, Joseph A. Banks, details on Gramby, different places that would be selling these type of pocket squares and accessories. And maybe you could have an educational summit for their customers where you could teach them how to tie a tie, do a pocket square, make really fun pocket squares. Like, so if you've been on a carnival cruise, they take these towels and they turn them into towel animals. So those towel animals, you could, they create a book over it. They could do a video on it, right? So what are, what are some creative and fun ways that you could do that? Like Jess, it could be um, ways to tie your shoes so that you don't have to retie them during a race. How do you stay hydrated 13.1 miles in? Like all these things that people are asking already, you can just create content around it and then find forums where people are having these questions or you can find, find forums where people are complaining or asking questions or commenting and creating relationships with those type of people. Like, I think all of this stuff is all about being proactive, having outreach that that's what people aren't doing. So you want to like, in, in a nutshell, the 55,000 words in anomaly are this, if you want to be the anomaly, be proactive and reach out to someone. I mean, literally still buy the book, still read the book. That's what it is that, and then how to position yourself to be the expert, have the credibility and be able to achieve the goals that you want, right? That's what you're going to read an anomaly. Okay. I should, you know what I should do? I should just put the cover on this thing and I should say those two words that are those two sentences that I just said and do that. Right. I know prom is coming. Okay. That's perfect. So what do you, so, so literally, okay. So I know you did some audio. Now what I want you to do is take some video and start doing those ties and find all these Facebook groups that are like high schools or different places where there's people trying to learn and get that video in front of them. How can I grab that audience? Figure out who owns that audience and reach out to them and, cr and create a relationship with them. So whether it's the teachers, the principals, the at-risk groups, the Boys and Girls Clubs of America, the YMCAs, all those different, there's a ton of places where all of these groups live and typically they are managed by someone. I don't mean owned or anything like that, like literally owned, but if it's a Facebook group, if it's a, if it's a school, if it's after school activities. So I know that I help a group called junior achievement and we've done some events together and they work with, I think, thousands of students, you know, maybe reaching out to them saying, hey, can I do a workshop on how to tie a tie? How to, um, what are those little, those stupid flower things that you put in? I don't, clearly I don't dress up. Um, think about being out of the box like that. I hate that term being out of the box. But my point is, like, all you have to do is get in front of these people which is a lot easier than you think because I guarantee that these after school groups or these schools want their students to succeed. Another one, Stanley. So schools, middle schools, high schools, they might be a little um, tentative about you because they might be like, who's this adult? What does he want? Okay, cool. Go to colleges and sororities and fraternities. I learned how to tie a tie. When I was dating this girl, not my wife, in college, I met my wife after college, thank God, and got my ring, and I had to go to some stupid sorority event, this girl was in a sorority, 
And what was interesting is that I didn't know how to tie a tie. So literally, I Google, and this is probably 05, 2005. Here's a good one. Let's do this. How, how to tie a tie. Google that. Let's see what pops up. Okay, so now there's this thing called ties.com, but I'm pretty sure I learned on something like howtotieatie.com. I'm actually, I bet it was this, tieatie.net. I don't remember the exact same thing, but look at these things. Pratt knot, Windsor knot. I don't know what any of these things are, but this is a website. Teaches you how to do this. And then, of course, Necktie accessories. That's probably what they sell. Is that what they sell? Men's tie. See, Stanley, this is the type of content that you could be creating. Like, these are what people are are looking for because they have no idea how to do this stuff. Jess, I've always said, like, do stuff. Do, like, the running questions. So I ran a half marathon four years ago. Gosh, was it been four years? Three years ago? Something like that. And... The crazy thing is I went to her and asked her a bunch of questions. If she was smart, she would have been creating content around those questions that I was asking because that's probably, if I'm asking that question and I'm her target customer, then that means a lot of people are probably asking that question. All right, so actually it might've been this one. I really don't remember which one it was. Actually, it could have been this. Okay, so four in hand, not whatever that means. Okay, so it's teaching me how to do this. Cool, there's a little video. So Stanley, that could be you doing it. Blah, 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 blah. Cool, cool, great. That's how you tie a tie. And you know what? I now know how to tie a tie. Yay! I don't tie a tie, but mm, once a year, maybe. Last time I tied my tie, a wedding day. I've been married five months. As you can hear, someone is in an ambulance. Hopefully they're okay. I always say that when someone, I hear an ambulance or a cop car or something like that, I said, you know, I hope they're okay. You know, when I worked in TV news, a lot of times they weren't okay. So it's, I'm just hopeful and thankful that they, that they are. But look, maybe you create content around the questions that a lot of people are asking you. Lenika Brown, what's happening? My point is this, is that we overcomplicate things. We say, oh, what should I write about? Literally start doing the dummies guide to whatever you do as a business. And then as that, as you start creating that content and making it better and content is creating answers and material to the people who are searching for it and putting it in a place that is documented well so that it can win by that. And what I mean by that, is that if you want to do, if you want to win how to tie a tie, then that's your series of keywords basically. And you want to create content around that. So if I wanted to do how to grow an amazing beard that doesn't itch, you know, I could probably search those keywords or how do you have amazing hair? I should say, I should start that website. How to have hair like ZachMiller.com coming to you to the internet near you. I'm not going to do that, folks. I'm not quitting my day job. This is my day job. I talk to you all day. What questions do you guys have, right? So, like, so maybe someone says, sees Jess's comment that says Instagram influencers. Okay, so maybe it's like, how do you create relationships with uh, Instagram influencers? How do you offer services to Instagram influencers? How do you find Instagram influencers? Right? All basically around that one set of keywords, Instagram influencers, but there's a series of content that you can do. How do you shave a perfect beard? How do you create a mustache? How do you do the mustache thingamabobs? How do you clean your glasses? How do you wash your hair? How do you tie a tie? How do you take off your ring? I didn't realize that before. You know, it's on there pretty good. But how do you do it? Because my jeweler, Adele Diamond, Chris Lyons, what's up, taught me that if I do this, and I push up a little and spin around. Ooh, it comes off. I never knew that before. So I could create content around that. We're overcomplicating how difficult content has to be. Instead, think about the questions that you are asked each and every 
day and document that information and then create content around it. Do you get it? Got it. Good. Haven't said that in a while. But boom, boom. People create content around the TV shows that they love. What is the black smoke in Lost? What are the diggy dogs or whatever they're called in Stranger Things? Why is Eleven's name Eleven? You could create content around that. Your TV shows. You could start, you could becoming a reviewer of shoes, TV shows, ties, tie styles, difficulty of ties, roller coasters, hairstyles, beard oil, ah, books, all of those things. Maybe you're an expert in one of those things and you can actually take this advice. Right, love, I've been, I've been, uh, Lavinia, I've been, I've been meaning to actually say this to you, right? So I think when you're doing some of your content, I've seen some of your lives, you're going too short. So the more deep dives that you can be doing on some of your stuff, I think you're going to see some um, even better um, success. And so oftentimes too, I think that you should, not just you, but anybody, Lavinia, is that you should be taking topics and going super deep into them if possible. Now I was on a, the, the reason I want to do this today, I was talking with John Mullins this morning for a phone call that we had this morning. And he and I were talking about a couple of topics. And I said, what do you like about my Zach Miller lives? This is Zach Miller live episode 26. <laughs> and he says, I love the simplicity of them. I said, oh, that's interesting because that's important to me. I think that these things should be super simple so that you guys could see how easy it is for you to do. But then when you see something to act on critique to make better you do it and so one thing that i've seen with facebook lives so edwin street he owns a company or kind of a community concept around coffee and different coffee events and he's trying to figure out what he wants to do around this he doesn't necessarily know yet so he's kind of still cur curating in his mind what he wants to do and what i love about it is he's starting to get some attention around his topics and he's doing these facebook lives but i see that he's doing these facebook lives and it's great that he's doing it but a couple of times in the beginning, he was just going live and there was no copy associated with it. So like with this one, it says, what's the exact title I used? Keep it simple, right? He would just post. And so I encouraged him to say live at whatever or live with so-and-so talking about whatever. Live with Lavinia talking about her upcoming expo at blah, 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 blah. Because I can't remember when the dates are. Right. Talking with Sally, Jesse Raphael about how to be the greatest TV host of all time. What are the or uh, something else could be. Um, what are the greatest TV hosting um, things to do ever? Like, just give a little bit more detail. Like your content is the video. But if people are just stopping. So think about how they're scrolling. Right. They're scrolling on Facebook. Like, we'll do this right now. So, OK, you're going to see me. There I am. Ha <laughs> ha. Whoa. That's so crazy. Okay. So we're going to scroll out of that. Okay. But like when you're scrolling through, this is how people scroll, right? So you see the pictures, then they want some context, right? So I'm trying to find a live video, maybe mine, but you're going to stop and then you're going to be like, okay, what is that? Then you're going to read this thing, right? So Dan Spencer says, I don't know what this is. Friendship hunting for Sasquatch. Best book ever. Right? So the things that we're stopping at, if you just see me talking, what's going to happen is you're going to be like, uh, what is this idiot talking about? So then, right? So bulletproof here at Jared's um, talk this morning, even if it was live, it says, okay, this is his show, Pride, you know that. Okay, so we're going to be talking about Pride. Okay, cool. Oh, there's Lavinia right there. Okay, so she does this. I'm here with Leslie. This is great. Coughing cool. It's perfect. Add some bit emojis. No, or just emojis into this. This is perfect. Linking to her stuff. This is perfect. Then you get there. It's perfect. Look at that. Great engagement. 18, 19 people liking it. But here's the thing. How long was she going? Six minutes right there. So what I have found is that the longer you go on videos, the more people that will get onto it as well. Yeah, so I would just go longer. Like, 
I believe, and I don't know this, I don't know how Facebook algorithms actually work, but I believe that if you look at all the really long videos on live feeds or all the videos that have a long, a lot of likes and loves, they're longer videos. And I think that's just because it takes longer for someone to start liking, engaging, sharing it with other people. So like, if you guys like this right now, share it, right? But then imagine me saying share it and then I immediately get off. What happens? I lose out on inter engaging and talking with people. And so at some point, lately, you can do like um, interviews with different people. You guys have seen me do that. You know, I think Lavinia, you've been able to do that a couple of times. But I think that it's going to, they're going to make it so it's Brady Bunch style. So it's going to be really easy for us to, to bring on other people. And so just be thinking about, okay, I have, I need to engage with my followers because if I can engage with my followers, Facebook will like that more because natively they want me to produce more content that is exciting for them that will get more ad revenue in front of them. And so if you do a series of like two minute videos, those two minute videos may be great, but I think the longer, the better, especially in live, not necessarily on non-live videos, but with live video, I think the longer that you go, the better chances you are of having that get somewhere on their algorithm. I think also frequency matters, right? So we do this every day, every weekday, likely starting around 2.30 every day, you know, give or take a few minutes. Every, like on Friday, I know I'm not going to be able to do 2.30 because I'm judging a competition, right? So I won't be able to do that. So I have to figure out a different time. But I think like that is probably something of importance. You know, so be thinking about how these tools, Facebook or not, were built and make sure that you use them natively. And what I mean by that is if you, here's a great example. If you do this today, go on your Facebook page or your regular page and post a video, do a live video, okay? Or just upload a video into your page. Then what I want you to do is afterwards, upload that same video to YouTube and take that YouTube video and post it on your wall. I guarantee you that the native video, the uploaded video will do better than the YouTube video that is linked to Facebook, even if it still plays on Facebook. Boom, knowledge bombs. I don't know, is that real? Is that a real thing? Knowledge bombs. You know, to me, it's like if, if, if we have some sort of knowledge knowledge and we can be helping others with it why aren't we helping people do that and maybe i have this gift and that gift is being able to help people with going through my scenarios and teaching them what i learned seems like a pretty easy concept and i think a lot of people are like well i'm worried that someone is gonna see this. That's the point. Sure, you can still have content that is premium. We all have to make money. But it's some people are asking the same question over and over again. Maybe that's what your free your free content should be, because that's like your in the door question. Like, Lavinia, what's the number one question you're getting right now? Is it something around your event? Jess, what's the number one question you get? Stanley, what's the number one question you get? David Moon, what's up, buddy? Like, what are the number what are the number one questions that you guys are even receiving? Have you ever started looking at that? I mean, you, you hear me say similar things over and over again because I don't think you guys are taking action on it. And so... Start thinking about what are people asking me over and over again, and are you creating content around that, right? Some people are asking me, well, how do I create a podcast? Okay, well, let's, let's talk about how you create a podcast. There's like the super detailed version, or there's like the Zach Miller Live version. It's just like raw and dirty. It's like we rat and dirty. It's just like here, this is like simplicity. This is what you need to do. Like, how do you do a Facebook Live? Log into Facebook, press Live, turn on your video, and start talking. 
I mean, that is the, like, that is, that's the stupid, dumb answer. Could you improve upon that? Sure. But that's how you do a Facebook Live. How do you shoot a podcast? You go to your phone, you go voice memos, you press record and you start talking, then you take that and upload it to SoundCloud. SoundCloud, I want a free account. Here's your plug. Living New York. Okay, great. So where's your coffee shop located? So they're probably asking you this because they think that the things that you're talking about mean that you should have a coffee shop. So if you're unsatisfied, I love this question. Too. I love that that's your question because you're probably pissed off at that because you don't have a coffee shop, right? And you're probably ticked off that you have to then take that information and instead of answering questions around what you actually do, you have to do a workaround trying, trying to reel people back in, right? When we had a physical office for six years, that's what people asked stuff about the physical office. I'm like, we have nothing, this is nothing to do with about the physical office. And so I do reel them back in. Do you guys like the animations? For those of you listening on just audio, I'm like making like a, a reel, like a fishing reel. I haven't fished in years. And so what I would do then, Lavinia, is be thinking about what words am I using that makes them think that I have a coffee shop. Or ask your following today, like when you think of me or you think of whatever this event is, this expo, or what you're doing, what are the words associated with it? And if those words aren't what you want them to be, you need to start making sure that when you are marketing yourself and positioning yourself, you're using the correct words. Because what you don't want is someone to think that you have a coffee shop and then show up to your coffee shop and it's not a coffee shop. You want to try and get in front of that basically. And so I would just make sure that the keywords that you're looking to do is that the keywords that you're trying to do are helping you, not hurting you. And so just be cautious with that because I think a lot of people will associate with one thing because it's easy, but there's probably words out there that you can use to really emphasize what you are doing. Stanley says, should I be wearing my own accessories right now or does it matter? I mean, I think it can't hurt. I mean, this is the Zach Miller brand. My hair, my beard right now, the championship belt. Like I take those places. I don't think it's going to hurt you. What if someone is, what if someone comes up to you and says, oh, I really like your accessories. What are you going to tell them? Oh, well, I'm the designer. Would you like a pair? I mean, to me, it's probably a no-brainer. I used to wear a hatch hoodie like every day. Then my wife hated it because it was black and it got dog hair on it. So then she bought me this. This is like the new Zach Miller hoodie, the gray. And then, you know, the black shirt, you got a rep. Because my dog likes to shed a lot of hair. It hasn't hurt the sales. It's not going to hurt your sales. There's no chance that you wearing your own gear is going to hurt you. If anything, if it's accessorized correctly, it's going to help you. You might even be able to find some influencers to wear your stuff too. Actually, here's a great example. This is a company called Fresh Clean Tees. They are out of... I'll give them a little plug. Let's do this. As you can hear, there's either a cop car or something else. Hopefully they're okay. I don't know. Maybe you guys can't hear that. Fresh clean teas. So they are like a t-shirt of the month club. I liked them because they were like cheap, but they're pretty cool. So that's probably what I'm wearing right now. Actually, that's Heathered, so probably not. So where are they based? I think they're based in like San Diego. Come on. Come on. I have no idea what's going on. Oh, that is so annoying. Seriously? Ugh. So you guys can't see, but um, an email popped up instead of just saying something. Okay, that's annoying. 
Maybe that's pretty standard. I don't know. Where are they based? It doesn't matter at this point where they're based because they don't want to tell me. I think they're based in San Diego. Anyway, I reached out to them about a year ago and I was like, hey, I'm basically wearing your shirt on my TV show every time. Hoping that they would be like, oh, we'll send you shirts. And then I said, oh, thank you. So maybe there's something that you could get to wear your clothes, your accessories, Stanley. I don't think it could hurt. Oh, so is that a Facebook thing on number six for tips? Is that an actual Facebook data point? I mean, it makes sense. I mean, go look at the longest ones. Go look at the ones that are most popular. They're longer ones. I think it's just from an engagement perspective, it takes longer to get those people on here. I love it when I'm right. It makes me feel so good. West Virginia is still in the, they're in the sweet 16. UVA lost, first ever number one seed losing to a 16. Gosh, I thought it was going to be Kansas. <clears throat> Ticked I was wrong. I knew, I knew I was close, though. You could just feel that it was going to happen. That was a heck of a game, though. And I need, I, I honestly, I never even read that, Lavinia. I just, I know that when I do like two minute videos, it just takes people a minute to get there. Now, I don't think that like when you, now my most successful one, I hyped up big time. That was my anomaly one. It was viewed by like 5,000 people or something. But I had a lot of people's interest on that. So I think that's a fluke. But I think you can take away some of those pieces. We also had 10 minutes of dead time. Basically, we were trying to get people to get on for about 10 minutes beforehand. So we could get them on the page. And then when I came up, and it was, it was good content. I went live for four hours. Remember that? That was wild. I tripped up on it trying to plan a live for this evening. There we go. So, yeah, I mean... I think live is probably one of the number one things right now on Facebook. Hopefully it, I think live is going to be like the biggest thing for the future in general. I think news organizations, media organizations, like sporting events, like stuff like this. I think it's the future. I do not think it goes away. I think it continues to be the future. And I think it's, it is the big thing. It's the next big thing. It's not going away. People might joke at it. Sorry, folks. Like, this is it. Like, this is this is your new media. And if you don't like it, tough. You better learn how to do it. Because it's, it's going to be important for you if you want to see success in your business. And I really, truly believe that. And it's something that I think is going to be important. And so I think that there's ways that if you are a developer, you can teach people how to do certain stuff. I was talking with Woody earlier about a series of different options and ways to improve his business user x check them out it's user x dot god i think it's dot co i could be wrong let's see i did dot com oh it is dot co isn't it yep user x dot co look at this oh this is great Actually, I'm going to show you guys this. So I love this. Okay. So we talk a lot about like trying to become the authority, being credible and stuff like that. And when you first get to someone's website, oftentimes you don't like know, like, are they credible? And so he's got this cool little guy, the Superman hero guy. I haven't been to this website in a long time. He gives you something for free. Okay. A free consultation. That's cool. What I love about that is it's kind of like when you go to the food court, you're like, oh, do you want to try the General Sal's chicken. You try it and you like it and then you're like, hmm, I'm gonna buy that. So that's what happens there, I love that. Here's your credibility right here. You know, they've done over 100 website or 100 sites, six mobile apps, 100, uh, 94 websites. That means like they've been around the block, they know what they're doing. They've worked on these kind of businesses. He's worked with mine, these other businesses. So these are like your credibility uh, state. Um, I can't speak your credibility point. You know, there's there. Also, I meant to check these guys out. Look how close they are. Flip deck. I love these guys. I hope they get there today. I think they will. There's my ADD. Okay, so then here's some content. So three keys to converting 
visitors into customers, writing great content for SEO, you know, an article versus a blog post. These are all things that look, even he doesn't even have a lot of content, which is fine. Like you don't have to have a crap ton of content. What you need to have is relevant content that people are looking for. This is actually, in my opinion, a really good um, landing page that shows a lot. I wonder what else I might put on here. Maybe some testimonials. It's probably the only thing that's missing. So figuring out who, and I don't even know if Woody's listening, but if he is, or if he's even on anymore, but um, a testimonial of someone. So he's got the credibility, but then finding out what other people's um titles are in their business or the company that they're working for. And so like, if they're like teammate at XYZ business, like get a testimonial from teammate at XYZ business, it just makes you look like the person that you're looking at is like you and helps you. So I don't know. Is Woody on? Who knows? doesn't matter. Anyway, appreciate you guys being here. Zach Miller live episode 26. Would love to know what you guys want me to do in the future. What episodes that you guys would like to hear about and or what questions you guys have because i'm here at the beckoning call of you you know the questions that you guys have I'm happy to answer them live when we're on or beforehand if you want to or in the coming days if you want to hit me up in the dms or just email me zach z-a-c-k at start with hatch dot com i will make it a point to answer those questions here live on zach Miller live but I'm forever grateful for you guys for always tuning in. I really appreciate it, whether you guys are watching live or replay later. If you guys like what you're watching, feel free to subscribe because that means you'll be notified every time that new content is ready to go. Until next time, bam! You know why I do that? I'm not even going to lie, I'm going to tell you. Because I need Dave to pick out a screenshot so that they don't always look the same every single day. So this will be the screenshot today. Looks fun, right? Here you go. Peace out, homies. Thanks for being here. See you guys next time. Good luck with the rest of your days. Go make some green and make a lot of more la 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 and a lot more friends. Thanks for tuning in. Peace. <laughs>